Electric potential due to a charged conductor. So let's remember what we know about a conductor. Uh, all the charge resides on the surface. Electric field lines just outside the surface point perpendicular to the surface and the conductor surface is equipotential. Uh, and now you can see from the spacing of the positive signs that the surface charge density is uh, non-uniform in this case. So in, at electrostatic equilibrium, we know that the net charge on a charged conductor resides on the surface. That's because uh, the electric field inside the conductor has to be zero. The charges, we have mobile charges, electrons will redistribute such that we have a net zero electric field inside. The electric field just outside is perpendicular to the surface. And we know that the electric field just outside is also equal to sigma over epsilon zero because the electric field inside is zero. The electric field inside is zero because the charges are mobile. They will have, if it wasn't zero, then we would have motion of charges and it wouldn't be equilibrium. The electric field at sharp points on a charged conductor is large. So we have a large density of electric field lines here. It's going to be a large electric field at a sharp point. And we will talk about this uh, conclusion uh, in, a, in a little while. And a cavity in a conductor has zero electric field. So if this is not filled with conductor, but if it's just a cavity, it would also have zero electric field. We will also talk about this. And a conductor is an equipotential surface. All the, uh, if you consider the uh, points on the surface, they will be at equipotential. So let's talk about this result to start with. The potential difference going from point B to point A, that is potential of A with respect to B, is minus the integral from point B to point A, E dot ds. So I'm going from point B to point A. But along this path, electric field lines are always perpendicular to the uh, displacement vectors. Therefore, the dot product will give us a zero. E ds cosine 90 is zero. Therefore, I will find that point B and point A are at the same potential. The conductor is an equipotential surface. The, if you consider a point inside and outside, because the electric field is zero between those two points, they would also be at the same potential. So if you consider a point a C inside, potential at point C would be equal to potential at point A would be equal to potential at point B, simply because the electric field inside is zero. E dot ds will give us a zero answer. Okay, so uh, moving a charge from inside the conductor to the outer surface does not cost any energy. So if I take a charge at point C, move it to outside to point B or point A, it would be, uh, it would not cost any energy because I'm moving on an equipotential surface. Okay, so uh, the, the potential at the surface is equal to potential inside and therefore it doesn't cost any energy to move a charge from inside of a conductor to the surface. Okay, so let's consider a charged conducting sphere. Uh, electric field inside a conductor, I know has to be zero for R less than capital R. Electric field inside has to be zero. For R greater than capital R, when I'm outside, I can form this uh, Gaussian uh, surface here, you can see for R greater than capital R, I can write Gauss law, the closed surface integral E dot dA, the total electrical flux is going to be equal to electric field times integral dA with the dot product here. Why? Because electric field is only a function of R, it will be a constant, it doesn't depend on where I am. Uh, for uh, a constant R value. And the uh, surface area is 4 pi R square. Electric field lines are perpendicular 
uh, to the surface elements so we would have e dot da equals e da cosine zero which is uh, one so this will be equal to the total charge enclosed q in divided by epsilon zero the total charge enclosed is the total charge that resides on the surface q divided by epsilon zero so i will find that the electric field uh, for r greater than capital r will be uh, k q over r squared in r hat direction you can see 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is k so i will have k q over r squared as my final answer for electric field outside a charged conducting sphere all right and you can see this result here electric field inside for r less than r is zero outside it goes as kq over r squared it has a maximum value kq over capital r squared right at the surface of the sphere now the electric field radial component is minus dvdr because it's minus the gradient of the potential therefore the potential as a function of r is minus integral our reference points is infinity remember infinity to r e dot dr and this is equal to minus integral infinity to r kq over r square in r hat direction and dr vector is dr in r hat direction so the dot product gives us a positive value okay so dr vector is defined as dr in r hat direction for uh, the direction from infinity to r of course these dr values will be negative right so this will be our integral integral of 1 over r square is minus 1 over r so i obtain minus minus 1 over r evaluated between infinity and r multiplied with kq so this gives me kq over r as the potential for r greater than capital r so the maximum value of the potential will be at the surface kq over capital r which will be the potential inside as well and i know that the potential has to be the same anywhere inside and at the surface so it's kq over r but outside it decreases as uh, 1 over r so potential for r less than capital r must be equal to the po maximum potential which is kq over r you can see here the conductor is an equipotential surface it's the same everywhere inside and at the surface points and then it decreases as 1 over r okay now regarding this uh, statement electric field at sharp points and charged conductor is large let's consider the following example two connected charged spheres two spherical conductors of radii r1 and r2 are separated by a distance much greater than the radius of either sphere so this distance d is much greater than r1 and r2 as shown in the figure the spheres are connected by a conducting wire this is a conductor the charges on the spheres is equ in equilibrium are q1 and q2 respectively and they are uniformly charged so these are uniformly distributed find the ratio of the magnitudes of the electric fields at the surfaces of the two spheres now electric field at the surface of the first sphere e1 is equal to k q1 over r1 square because we know that the electric field at the surface is kq over capital r squared that's what we have found here so that's kq1 over r1 squared for the second one the electric field at the surface is kq2 over r2 squared the ratio of the electric fields e1 to e2 ratio will be equal to 
q1 divided by q2 r2 squared divided by r1 squared now what is the potential at r1 it is kq1 over r1 normally i should consider the contribution to the due to the potential from this one but d is much greater than r1 and r2 so this is very far away the contribution to the potential at the surface due to these charges is negligible this must be equal to the potential at r2 why because they're connected by a conductor they are equipotential which is k q2 over r2 so q1 over q2 must be equal to q1 over uh, q2 must be equal to r1 over r2 okay so the ratio of the electric fields is q1 over q2 r2 square over r1 square the potentials are the same so q1 over q2 is equal to or q1 over r1 over q2 over r2 is equal to 1 or q1 over q2 r2 over r1 is 1 or q1 over q2 is r1 over r2 so if i substitute this result here i will find that therefore electric field at the surface of the first conducting sphere divided by that of the second conducting sphere is r1 over r2 ratio of the charges multiplied by r2 square over r1 square so i have one of the r2s and one of the r1s cancelling and therefore this is equal to r2 divided by r1 so the ratio of the magnitudes of the electric fields at the surfaces e1 over e2 is equal to r2 over r1 all right so what does that tell me now since r2 is less than r1 e1 is less than e2 now this whole thing is a charged conductor which has a sharp point and a, a not so sharp point so you can see that the electric field e2 is greater than e1 so this sharp point has a larger electric field indeed a small radius of curvature on a charged conducting surface creates a large electric field we have basically proven the state field a statement that the electric field at sharp points on a charged conducting surface has to be large now regarding the uh, electric field inside a cavity let's consider the following example arbitrarily shaped charged conductor with a cavity the electric field in the cavity must be zero regardless of the charge on the conductor so if i consider two points points a and b uh, i go from point uh, a to point b therefore i'm writing potential of b with respect to a which means I'm going from point A to point B. This is minus the integral A to B E dot DS. And I know that on a conductor, the two points on the surface are at equipotential. So this integral has to be zero since the conductor surface is equipotential what does that mean potential at point a is equal to potential at point b so how is that possible the electric field has to be zero so the electric field inside the cavity has to be equal to zero so another point that we have made at the beginning of this lecture is proven so to summarize 
we have some important properties of an electrical conductor at electrostatic equilibrium. All the charge resides on the surface. Electric field just outside is perpendicular to the surface, has a value sigma over epsilon zero. Remember, we have shown this using Gauss law. Electric field inside is zero. Electric field at sharp points is large. If you, if you have a cavity uh, inside a conductor, the electric field inside is zero. And the conductor is an equipotential surface. The potential at inside at point C, point B, and point A are the same. So we considered the potential difference between B and A because electric field is always perpendicular to the displacement vectors. That, that product gives us zero. And electric field inside is zero. So if going from point B to point C, for example, we would have VCB equals to zero. That means VC equals VB equals VA. And this also implies moving a charge from inside to outside or along the surface of a conductor does not cost any energy. Uh, when we consider a charged conducting sphere, electric field inside is zero for any conductor. Electric field outside decreases as one over R squared, as we have shown using Gauss law. And the potential inside is a constant. It's equal to the potential at the surface. Outside, it decreases as one over R when we write electric field as a uh, as minus gradient of the potential. That's the result we obtain. Uh, to show that the electric field at sharp points on a conducting surface is uh, large, we have considered two charged conducting spheres with a very large distance between them, but connected by a conducting wire. Uh, we have used this result, electric field at the surface is kq over r squared, so it's kq1 over r1 squared and kq2 over r2 squared for the two electric fields. When we take the ratio, we obtain q1 over q2, r2 squared over r1 squared. Since they are connected with a conductor, this whole thing is an equipotential surface. All points are at the same potential, so v at r1 is equal to v at r2. Uh, so that means Q1 over Q2 is R1 over R2. So the ratio of the electric fields is then R2 over R1. So R2 is great, less than R1. That means E1 is less than E2. Electric field at, at the lower uh, side of the conductor is greater because it has a small radius of curvature R2. And when we consider a cavity, if you go from... Uh, one point A to point B using a path that goes through the cavity because the potential difference has to be zero between these two points. This tells us that electric field inside the cavity in a conductor must be zero as well.